Hi everyone, today is May 15, 2012 and this is a vlog that I have kind of been looking forward to and not looking forward to. This is the story of Kinder or the story of when everybody stepped up. You may remember on May 22nd I made a vlog called Happy Birthday Kinder. Kinder was a lamb that was born on my farm on April 22nd. Her mom was Icy, who's a Shetland. And Kinder was the most full of life little lamb you could ever imagine. She was pure black and she was just gorgeous. On May 15, 2011, I had just come home from drum corps. Me and my mom had gone out to run some errands and when we got back, we heard my sheep, um, couldn't be sure who it was, crying in the back. like. Cr screaming out and we ran in the back my ma my mom ran before me and uh, I was kind of sauntering I wasn't sauntering but I don't know I it, you know I don't expect anything to ever actually happen and it was dark at this point all of a sudden my mom yells Carly Carly you come here now so I start running down I actually slipped and fell in the mud it was very muddy. I was wearing my WGI jacket and some jeans, but that's besides the point. No, I was wearing black pants. Anyway, so I, I went in the gate, and she's like, something has happened. Something horrible has happened. And I looked in her arm. She had the flashlight. It hard, And I don't know if you remember me telling you, but I'm bad with blood. I'm bad with medical stuff. I can't. I pass out. So she was holding Kinder. Her head was just so bloody. I, I'm I'm surprised I didn't pass out, but I held it together. And she's like, we, we have to get her. We have to get her to the animal hospital. We have to get her there now. So we went. We ran around. My mom grabbed the sheet, and I sat in the passenger side of the van, put the sheet on, and then put the sheep on. <laughs> See what I did there? Lamb. Whatever. So she was laying there in my arms on my lap. And... I was petting her and holding her because she was still fidgety and I just kept talking to her. So my mom got in the car and we started driving to the animal hospital and then she called the animal hospital and was like, I'm bringing a lamb, it's an emergency, you, we need, you know, I just want you to be ready, we're coming with her, it's an emergency. And the animal hospital people said, oh, okay, we'll be ready, you know about our new location, right? And my mom said, no, when did, when did you move in a new location? <laughs> and they're like, oh, we're in this town now. My mom knew where it was. She had been there and passed it once in the daytime. It was now nighttime, 8, 8.39 at night, and we were already on the road. There was no time to go get the GPS. There was no time to do anything. And we weren't that far out of the way. We could still kind of whoop, like, huh, we meant to do that and go to the new location. So now, my mom is driving to the hospital with just the picture of it in her mind and how to get there. She, we didn't have a GPS. We, she had seen it there one time in the daytime. And now we had to get there at night from a totally different town. So I'm holding Kinder and just talking to her. Because I felt that was the most important thing, just to keep talking to her. And a few times she actually got up and started, like, jumping. <laughs> and I was like, no, Kinder, you have to. And I think that's when I actually started to have hope. So now I look down and the sheet is just covered in blood. And I kick in the gear, and I'm just extra talking, extra being nice, extra, oh, Kinder, it'll be okay, we, your mom planned this, it's a surprise, and she forgot, and that's why we have to get you there so fast. And the ride to the animal hospital took about 25 minutes. That was the longest 25 minutes of my life. And they said, when you're five minutes away, call us and we'll have a stretcher outside. So when we were five minutes away, we called, and we're like, we're almost here, so we'll have the stretcher outside. And when we got there, there was no stretcher outside. And 
I guess that's all we could really focus on. Because that's all we really wanted to focus on. So about for the next 30 seconds, all we could say was, there's no stretcher, there's no stretcher. There, so we, we pulled up, and my mom came around, took her off me. I was paralyzed there for a moment. Because now, all this energy has now drained out of me, trying to, you know, keep the lamb alive. I just, I'm channeling, I was channeling everything. And now I'm feeling faint and woozy, and I was like, no. No, you have to keep it together, because this is, this is it. This is, this is stepping up time. So, my mom brought her in, laid her on the counter, and was like, this is the lamb. They took her, and took her to the back. Then my mom took her barn shoes off, because they're barn shoes, and she felt she needed to. And then we went, and they put us in a room to wait. Um, so my mom went out to get something, just to get a thing of water, and I was waiting there. So now, is the time I want to inform you. May 15th is of last year, was the 11th anniversary of my grandfather's passing. He was a farmer. This is going to play into it later. And on his little cards at the funeral, you know the little cards with the name and then there's the poem. It was the little poem story about the guy and the one set of footprints. So now I'm sitting in the waiting room and I start texting Cassie and I go something horrible has happened. I'm not gonna text you it but you need to be at my house. I'm not there and I'm not gonna be there for a little bit but you need to be there. This is not an option. Later she went to show me I wrote this is an option but I think she got to just that it was not an option. So she's like, what's going on? And I'm like, I, I can't. Like, I can't right now. I, I don't know the extent of it, but I can't. So then, this my mom came back in and this woman came in and she, like, slammed paperwork down at us. And my mom's like, can we deal with that later? Like, <laughs> like we're going through a tragedy here. And the woman's like, well, we're not going to be able to touch your lamb until you fill this out. So then my mom's, like, reading the questions out loud. The woman left the room and I'm now saying expletives, which I don't usually say expletives in front of my mom, but I was really mad that that woman could be so disrespectful when we're obviously going through a horrible time. And another woman, she made it so much better, but I never got to thank Amanda. So Amanda, if you ever watch this, thank you, because you made that night bearable. Then the, the vet came in, and he told us the options. Pretty much as soon as she left my arms, she went into a coma. And there was nothing they could do. They, they could try surgery. The sheep are so delicate. We knew what had to be what had to be done. So it was done. We went out the back and we had to walk all the way around to the front to where my mom's shoes were before we could pick her up. And when my mom was walking, I, I just looked back. I don't know why, but I did. I guess one of her socks was wet and the other wasn't because there was just one half of footprints and I couldn't stop thinking about the story on the back of my grandfather's obituary card. The story of the one set of footprints. So I took a picture so that we went around and we picked her up. They had her name written Kinder. Cover wrote her name on the box. They wrote her name and then they put a little heart next to it. So whoever did that, if it was you, Amanda, thank you. And we got the box and we put it in the van. So we got home and it was the hardest car ride home. And the car ride felt like it took five minutes. And we got home and Cassie was in the driveway. She had taken Ella out because Ella was still just a baby puppy. And that was the first night Ella didn't want the bed. And Cassie was just crying because she had heard Icy in the back crying. And she knew something had happened. She knew something horrible had happened. She basically said who was it. And we said it was Kinder. Now we had a problem. Because when Icy couldn't find Kinder, she would always butt Dayton, who was a little lamb. Um, just 11 days older than Kinder. And we couldn't have Icy hurting Dayton by accident and we couldn't put her out in the barnyard because we have a pond and she was frantic she was just frantic and we didn't want her accidentally falling into the pond and drowning so I had the idea to bring her up to 
our shearing pen that we bring them up to when they need to be sheared. She spent the night there. And I think the hardest part, because she was frantic the whole night. She was running in and out of the little dog house. I don't know how she fit in there. The worst part was every time she would see a black cat pass, her eyes would light up because she thought it was her baby. But it wasn't, and it never would be again. So we finally just couldn't. We just couldn't anymore, so we went inside. I, I, I decided that night, two days before, we had gotten all the sheep sheared and I was holding Kinder so that Icy would follow me. And every time Kinder's legs would like get on, like I'd be holding her, every time they'd like fall out of my arms, she'd kick me in the leg. And she left this huge bruise on my leg right across my thigh. I decided that night I wanted to get her name tattooed right where the tip bruise was. After it healed, of course. Because I wanted to remember this night. Because it was the night that everyone in my life stepped up. It was the night that everybody dropped everything and worked for the common goal. Cassie stepped up by dropping everything and just coming over to the house and going above and beyond by walking the lot and just being there. And she was very involved in Kinder's life. I stepped up because I didn't faint. <laughs> and I was there for Kindy. My mom stepped up by getting to that place that she'd only seen once. And Ella stepped up because nobody needed to be cleaning her sheets that night. Kinder had gotten out of the mom and baby enclosure. And just a freak thing happened where she got a head injury. Sometimes I see will go into the enclosure. Because Dayton's over a year old now, the gate will be open sometimes. And she will still look at the place that her baby escaped out of there. And every time she does it and I see her, I just start crying. The next day, we reinforce the fence. The lad that could never happen again. Because Dayton, you know, she was still a baby. Kinder would have been a month old on May 22nd. My grandfather's birthday. <laughs> she died on May 15th, the same day she did. Except he was 72. And she was 24 days old. And on May 31st, 2011, I got my kinder tattoo. Thank you for watching this. Especially if you made it through the whole thing, it means a lot. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.